Uh, hi everyone, my name is Feng, and uh, I will introduce our recent work accepted by SML, learning deep kernels for two sample tests. Uh, I will first introduce two sample test problem and uh, give an overview of our problem, our paper. First of all, I will introduce what's a two sample test problem. In a two sample test problem, we want to tell if two sets of samples are from the same distribution. Taking the means as an example here, if we got the real means data size and the generated means data size, and if we and use the sample test pro method, we can know uh, real means and generated means are from different distributions. So to solve the two sample test problem, a well-known one is uh, based on kernel functions and called maximum mean discrepancy, shortly MMD for short. In the MMD, it includes a kernel a select kernel function k and two samples sp and sq. To compute the MMD, we need to compute three mean values. The first mean value is kxx from sp and kyy from sq. And the third mean value is kxy from this, uh, this kernel function, uh, kernel matrix. And MMD can be used, uh, can be calculated by the eight, the first two mean values and the minus two times the third mean values. From this equation, we can say the MMD is actually depends on the kernel selection, right? The different K may give the different performance of, M of MMD. So in this work, we found that the simple kernel like the Gaussian kernel or Laplace kernel, the translation invariant kernel, cannot give the a good performance when facing the complex data size like images. Here, we take example called blob data size here. In the blob data size, the samples from Q, the each mode in Q has different variance compared to each mode in P. If we use a Gaussian kernel to compute MMD and it do the two sample test task, we can find that the contour of Gaussian kernel is just the circles in the across the space. It means that the translation invariant kernels behave the same way across the whole space. However, if we use a deep kernel, we can find that the count of deep kernel can fit the data and uh, using this deep kernel, we can find the area that can uh, distinguish between two samples most. And the deep kernels are non-translation invariant kernels and it behaves a different way across whole space. Okay, let's start introduce our work in detail. First, I will introduce why the two sample test problem is important in the machine learning field and give uh, introduce two well-known two sample test methods. A basic assumption of a machine learning algorithm is that training and test set are from same distribution. If they are from same distribution, we can safely use the classifier trained on CIFAR 10 to classify the uh, images in the CIFAR 10.1, like this examples. And CIFAR 10.1 is a new test set of a well-known CIFAR 10 data set. However, if CIFAR 10.1 and CIFAR 10 has distributional discrepancy, we cannot just uh, use the classifier trained on CIFAR 10 to classify images on CIFAR 10.1, because it will lead to the poor performance of the classifier. So it means that in the uh, when we use when we use our, uh, machine learning algorithms, we always need to check if the test set are from the same distribution of the training site. Right. So the first well-known classifier to sample test a uh, to sample test is a classifier to sample to sample test C2ST for short. Uh, in the C2ST, they want to use the accuracy as a statistic to distinguish between two data sites. We can take means examples here. If we give, if the two samples are from the same distribution, like the real means, and we want to train a classifier to classify this real means data sites, and the accuracy will be around 0 0.5, right? Because they are actually from the same data site. If we use a generator means here as a, as a Q and a mean, real means here as a P, like these two samples, and, and then we train a classifier to distinguish real means 
and generally means the accuracy should be greater than 0 0.5, right? So we can use accuracy as a statistic to help us judge if two samples are from the same distribution. It is a K idea of the classifier to thermal test. Another one is a kernel-based test or kernel-based MMD, as I mentioned before. The MMD is based, is based on the basic lemma, a dualist lemma 9.3.2. In this lemma, they told us that they told us two distributions are the same if and only if these two expectations are the same for all continuous bounded function. Based on this lemma, we can give the definition of the integral probability metric. However, in this definition, we cannot get the est good estimation of the supernorm. No, right? It is not a good term to estimate. So to solve this issue, we can use, we can limit the capital F here be a unit ball in the reproducing kernel Hilbert space. And when the F is in the unit ball of the RKHS, we can compute the soup analytically. Then we can get an unbiased or consistent S meter of the IPM. Another well-known example of the IPM, including the Wasserstein distance and the statistic used in the KS test. So as I mentioned before, after we use uh, after we limit the ball in the RKHS, we can get a simple form of compute MMD using a kernel function K. And we can get on basis meter of kernel MMD, like I introduced in the overview. Now, we have two main categories in the two thermal test method, right? The first one is classifier to thermal test, C2ST. Second one is a kernel based MMD test. Which one we should follow to push the, to research how to research to solve the two thermal test problem well, right? We need to consider this problem. So in the next section, we will show that the classifier to thermal test is actually a special case of kernel MMD test. If we use to, if we use the following kernel MMD, here it is a sine kernel, right? Because this one is a sine, sine function. So we call it a sine kernel. If we use a sine kernel in MMD, we show that the C to SDS is a well-known uh, classifier to thermal test is uh, equivalent to the MMD test with this sine kernel. Similarly, if we use this linear kernel here. This one is a linear kernel regarding F, right? And we prove that a classifier to thermal test with uh, uh, scores, like uh, it, it's called C2STL, is also equivalent to an MMD test with uh, this linear kernel. So it means that, uh, it means that the classifier to thermal test a special case of the MMD test. So if we want to uh, develop more powerful to the test methods, and we need to focus on how to improve the MMD test. Next, I will introduce the limits of the simple kernel-based MMD test. As I introduced before, the test power of kernel MMD is actually depends depending on the kernel choices, right? And the common kernels we use in the literature, including uh, the Gaussian kernel, Laplace kernel, or IMQ kernel, all of them that translation invariant kernel. In the translation invariant kernel, if we minus the x and the y with the, same, uh, with the same value, and the kernel value will maintain, it means the translation invariant property. It means that the simple kernel or saying translation invariant kernel behaves the same way across whole space, and it is not the uh, optimal way to look the difference between two samples. Here is, a, is also the contour of the Gaussian kernel. We can say in the Gaussian kernel, all contours looks the same. And this kind of kernel behaves the same way across whole space. However, in our work, we consider deep kernel, learn a deep kernel. And the deep kernel can learn a, learn a space and learn a contour. And using that contour, we can distinguish two samples well and better than the translation invariant kernel case. And for non-translation environment kernel, it behaves a different way across whole space like this image shows. So 
Let's go to the how to design a deep kernel for the Tuzama test. A simple way to design a deep kernel is just to use a deep, uh, deep network and as a feature, and then we put this feature to the Kappa. Kappa here is a Gaussian kernel, right? It's a very simple way to design a deep kernel. However, we find that if we design a deep kernel like this, the k omega x y is not a characteristic. Means that we can find the pq and pnq are different, such that mmdpq equals zero. It is not a good property we want. Another issue is if we use that kernel and this uh, and this kernel may consider extremely far away inputs as too similar because the deep kernel is very flexible. Namely, kxy equals zero, but x is far away from y. As this situation will happen, it is not we want. Here, we can see the contour of deep kernel. If we use the simple design deep kernel, and we will get a very strange contour here. But notice that this contour center is in this figure. So it's really weird contour, right? Really weird contour. To avoid this thing and to make the deep kernel can be real, can be characteristic, we design a kernel like this one. Here's the epsilon, epsilon, epsilon Q can make sure our kernel is a characteristic kernel. And the Q itself can help us prevent the learned kernel from considering extremely far away inputs as too similar. Using this kind of deep kernel, this very strange contour will disappear. Next thing is how to learn this kernel, right? Because we have the deep network here and get a lot of parameters inside them. To optimize the deep kernel, we consider to use the asymptotic distribution of empirical MMD. In this equation, the left side is uh, represent the test power of MMD and the right side is approximate test power. Because the second term is much smaller than the first term. So we want to maximize, maximize the first term directly. Because if the first term is very large, it means that we have a very high test power. So we can get S meter of the first term, right? Uh, but we do not consider the square N and use consider this MMB square over sigma H1 to estimate this one. And we maximize this. After we maximize this, we can get the maximized test power. So the K to learn deep kernel is to maximize J lambda hat. In the J lambda hat, we use the weight statistic to estimate the sigma H1. Next, I will show some theoretical outcomes of our paper. With regularity conditions, we have shown that the approximate test power uniformly converts to the population test power. The second one is the learned network parameters is close to optimal one. Namely, if there is a unique best kernel omega star, the maximizer of J lambda hat converts in probability to omega star. The last one is our theory also applies to simple bandwidth selection algorithm and classical multi-kernel learning. For more technical details, Please see our paper. Then I will introduce our experiment. We first consider the blob data side, as I introduced many times before. The first baseline is mean binding test. The second baseline is ICF test. Those tests are the stiff R test before the uh, deep kernel MMD. And uh, the other one is the C2ST category, the C2STS, as I introduced before, and the C2STL. And the fifth baseline is MMDO. In MMDO, we do not introduce deep kernel. We only, uh, to, max, we only to optimize the bandwidth of the Gaussian kernel. Right? So it is an MMD with an optimized Gaussian kernel. The last one is MMDD, is our proposal. We can say MMDD outperforms most baselines and get a comparable result with the C2STL on blob data side. Another data side is a high dimension Gaussian mixture data side, HDGM. 
we illustrate the samples of HDGM when dimension is two. Then we can say when we're increasing the sample size or increasing the sample dimension, we can get the good results in general compared to other baselines. Other data side we consider is a hex data side. We can say we also get the highest test power. And uh, we also consider to use our deep kernel based MMD to distinguish uh, on the image data size. It's a very challenging the task. And here we consider the real means and the general means by the DC gun. We can say we have the highest test power compared to others and the margin is large. The last thing we want to show that uh, we use at, at the beginning, we I show the CIVA 10 and CIVA 10.1, right? And we do not know if both the data side are from same distribution, right? And in our paper, we finally show that the CIVA 10 and CIVA 10.1 are, are actually from different distributions. And our, our method, MMDD, got the highest reject rate. It means we got the best performance at highest test power. In the end, we can consider to design more deep kernels, right? Like the sine deep kernel, linear deep kernel, Gaussian deep kernel, and our deep kernel for the two sample tests. And we can also do, consider objectives. What the first objective is to maximize the approximate test power, J. The second objective, like C2ST, to minimize the cross entropy loss. We test test power on blob, HDGM, HIX, and MIST. We can say the linear kernel, the deep linear kernel plus the minimizing cross entropy has a better performance than the S plus C. And uh, if we minimize the cross entropy, the Gaussian deep kernel and our deep kernel cannot perform good from well, sorry. And then if we consider do not use the cross entropy to minimize cross entropy, we consider to maximize the approximate test power the linear kernel-based uh, deep kernel method has the best, uh, better performance than previous one, right? And another is Gaussian kernel plus J. And the last one is our proposal is our deep kernel plus J has the highest test power. It means that when we change from the sine deep kernel to linear deep kernel to Gaussian deep kernel to the our deep kernel, the performance will be improved in general. And if we consider, uh, if we change from minimizing the cross entropy to maximizing the uh, approximate test power, the performance will be also be improved. So it is uh, uh, the whole talk uh, today. Thank you. And this is the acknowledgement. Thank you. Any Please. questions? A little bit over one. We just have three minutes for Q&A sessions. Any questions? So I have a question here. So uh, in MMD, actually, uh, this is very powerful because this is uh, unbiased estimations and in, uh, based on universal kernel. But the thing is, um, the MMD usually is not sample efficient to estimate. That means you have to use a lot of data in order to estimate correctly. Okay. So, I mean, there are other methods, maybe uh, maybe model-based methods are maybe more if, if, uh, more sample efficient. For example, you can use some string equations to estimate the distribution difference. Have you considered compare them, I mean, in terms of uh, number of samples? Mm, you, mean, you mean the number of samples uh, what's the performance? To estimate the distribution difference. Uh, okay. Uh, I I didn't I didn't I didn't to compare that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. actually, in, when we when we training our when we training our deep kernel, we use a mini batch manner to train it. So the training cost is actually it, it's not high actually. Because we do yeah, not. I, I, I mean, the training cost may be not a, a factor, but what I mean is the, um, uh, the asymptotic uh, efficiency to estimate the distribution difference. Uh, 
Well, I mean, MMD is based on the uh, kind of estimations. It will, this is non parametrics. That means uh, you have to use a lot of data sample to in order to estimate well for the distribution difference. But there may be some model based methods that can more efficient in terms of samples to using field sample to estimate the distribution difference. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 that's true, yeah. Uh, yeah, if we got uh, some knowledge about the, about the model or the distributions, we can get it quickly, yeah, from theory or the practice. Yeah, yeah. and another question is, if we're just using deep features, then why don't we just using some other methods? For example, string equations may be more faster than, than MMD. Mm, you mean using our using other method to compare to distribution rather than MMD, right? Yes. So uh, yeah, well, can you give the example about that? Maybe which which one? Do you uh, mean? For example, you can use some uh, density ratios or string formula to compute the. Uh, okay, uh, but for the density ratio, it requires the two distribution have the same support side. Yeah. It, it sometimes not not realistic in the real world. Right? Um, for the for the KL divergence, they, they need to they need to make sure P and Q have the same support size, so they can do the uh, P over Q things. Yeah. Okay. okay thank you. Uh, any other questions?